I don't know how both of these are true, but they, they kind of are. Is there anything more important but also more boring than when your team hires the coach slash coordinator of one side of the ball and it's somebody who you have no idea is good or bad at it? I mean... I don't think it's boring. I think you immediately start to question like, well, who is this guy? Because I feel like that's what Oregon did with Dan Lanning, not an NFL example. But sure. plucking guys out of obscurity is always fascinating for me because all the coverage is, you know, usually ESPN's Adam Schefter or, or some insider has a list of these eight names that are being interviewed. And it's fascinating to me when these guys come out of nowhere, when we know nothing about them. Usually they've got something and we all find out what it is uh, like pretty quickly. Quickly, well, so. the Titans are starting a new operation with Brian Callahan yeah. of Callahan Auto. <laughs> Just got my car repaired down at Callahan Auto, baby. $800 bill. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, but he he picked the D.C. for his team. The Tennessee Titans' new defensive coordinator is Denard Wilson, DB coach of the Ravens. And that's what I'm talking about is like how massive a hire that is. But also, uh, is he is he going to be a good D coordinator? DB's coach, sure, the Ravens were fine in the secondary. Will that translate? I don't know, but it's also the Ravens, so I think most people just lean yes. I think that's the thing about all of these guys is how unproven they are. Mike McDonald's 36. He was a coordinator for two years. But he also might be one of the best hires of the of the offseason for anybody. Callahan in Tennessee. I, I mean, he had Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon and T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. He had some weapons to operate that offense with. He also, I believe, wasn't calling the plays. I believe he was scheming, but Zach Taylor was calling plays. So is he going to be amazing? Am I going to see the Bengals offense in Tennessee? All of these hires are important, but it's ha- it's hard to have a real read if they're, if they're truly great hires, good hires. You can feel good about a hire. That doesn't mean it's a good hire. And that's that's the interesting part of all of this is picking guys that are either just positional coaches or really young with small glimpses of flash. And Tennessee's going to do that with Denard Wilson and Brian Callahan. Again, it might be the right move, but it's kind of a wait and see type deal so much as like, here's the hot take. Denard's amazing. I mean, I'm sure you're going to find players that rant and oh, rave yeah. about Denard Wilson in Baltimore. We'll see what he's like as a coordinator. Uh, the Philly news is interesting to me. Have you seen the Philly news? Uh, the No, not not recently, oh. which is bad because I'm I'm doing sports updates, so I hope I didn't miss anything. No, no breaking news. Schultz, okay. it's loud. It is loud in Philadelphia, PA right now. The rumblings are Sirianni had to get new coordinators, and some believe he was kind of strong-armed into that, probably by Howie Roseman. Yeah, bringing in Kellen Moore recently. Yeah. Yes, sir. New, uh, new OC. There's a report out that the Eagles are ready for Bill Belichick in the off chance the Sirianni thing doesn't work. And I have an opinion on this, and I have for quite some time. The Florida coach falls into this category. If you're going into the year and like your fan base and the local media and maybe even you are generally not feeling amazing about your coaching situation or putting it on like a win or get out, I tend to believe it it doesn't work well usually in those spots. And when I, when you hear rumblings and noise that like the next guy could be up before the guys even come out for the next year, eh, I don't have the most confidence in that situation. It makes me kind of question everything. Like you're already looking at the next coach, but you, you want to keep this coach. I, okay, good luck. Jerry Jones and Dallas, same thing. McCarthy mm-hmm. and every it sounds like Dan Quinn's coming back. I okay. Well, if you if you lose in the division round again, it, he's firing him, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just it's it's a weird it's a weird game owners and and college football programs play is the backing of a coach when we all kind of know like it's hey it's win now or or you're gone and if you don't win enough now that still isn't good enough you'll be gone. I 
I never really feel great about that situation. Well, Philly in general, I mean, look at the last five to seven years there. It's been a tumultuous spot to be a head coach. Doug Peterson, Super Bowl win up oh, two years later. You're not doing good enough. I get the need for immediate success in the NFL, but you cannot ever convince me that two years removed from winning a Super Bowl, it makes the most sense for your franchise to move on from its head coach. And so from there, you go to Sirianni. And I don't know if it's the owner meddling, if Sirianni's a bad head coach if that it, I don't know which one is leading to this issue but anytime that you hear about other options being thrown out there in case this guy's bad you just need to cut cut bait and just move on then I don't get why they just don't fire Sirianni if they're having these discussions why why hold the guy on a hook is he as you just said there's really not a great history of success with those guys being told win now or you're gone and Philly though seems to live on that whole whole, whole mentality of this is how we want to win we're going to put pressure on you. Well they're a miserable fan base they're never happy about anything. It's the Yankee way right? I mean it, yeah there's a lot, I mean East Coast people tend to be more passionate and a little more ridiculous about this stuff than us out in the West Coast and it's it Philly's no different than any other. If not, it, they're maybe the loudest of all of them. Uh, real quick, Ryan Clark, maybe potentially eyeing a Pittsburgh uh, Russell Wilson relationship. Good luck, S Steelers with Russell Wilson. <sighs> you do anything for anybody? Maybe. Okay, Tomlin's offenses haven't been amazing since you know he had the triple Bs there. But he hasn't, yeah, yeah, hasn't had a quarterback since then. I, so. I'm well aware of that, but their offense was historically bad, which is why he fired Mike Canada last year during the season. I mean, if you put a gun to my head and said, "Hey, Jordan, you're starting a team it's extreme," with... I wouldn't put a gun to your head. Well, thank you, yeah. but but if you said you're starting a team with either Mitch Trubisky as your quarterback or Russell Wilson, come on. <laughs> Don't say what you're gonna say. Or, or, or Kenny Pickett. You're taking or Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Thank you. Yeah, hey, come on. It's but obvious. you got that contract now, so and uh, it's just starting this year. It's five year deal. Well, I know Mike Tomlin as opposed to I. I know Sean Payton didn't put up with it either, but the whole Mister Unlimited stuff would not fly. So, so I guess it's really can you get Russell Wilson to play your game? And if no coach in the NFL can get Russell Wilson to come in and and act how they want him to act without having an office, without being the guy and Mister Unlimited and and let's ride then yeah, I don't think any coach is going to want him.